Good morning, dear friends. Nice to meet with you during this time of meditation. And it is my prayer that today's meditation, which is in continuation of the same line we have been following the last two days. And today's meditation is based on two scripture passages. One in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 10 verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And the second passage is found in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. 3 verse 17 says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. A genuine Christian life is a Christ-centered life. It is a life that seeks God's glory in whatever we speak, whatever we do, whatever we even imagine. For Paul, God's glory was so important for him that even his eating and drinking, he says, I do it in order to glorify God. That my eating, anything I desire, will not be a stumbling block to others who are weak in the faith. And so it is very important, especially in this modern time, when we are a little careless about uh, what we speak, what we do, what we eat, what we drink. And uh, for us, we take a very light, uh, very lightly these things, but not for the apostles and especially Apostle Paul. Now, how are we going to uh, determine or judge something I am going to say or do will be for the glory of God or it, will it bring shame to the name of Jesus. How can we judge? I am going to tell you seven questions that you must ask in order to help you to understand whether something we are going to speak or do will be pleasing to God and glorify God. Question number one, what you are about to do or speak can it be done for God's glory or honor? And uh, in connection with this, you please read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, and also chapter 11, verse 1. Take down these references, and after this meditation, you go back and read these references in order to what I mean. Question number two. Can it be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Remember, you are to represent Jesus Christ and all he stands for. We are ambassadors for Jesus, and that means we are representing our king and his kingdom and what he stands for. Because a worldly man, for example, he does not read the Bible. He does not know the God of the Bible. So the only Bible, open Bible he reads is you as his friend or neighbor. And so he will read you. And seeing you, listening to you, watching you, he will know what kind of God you serve and what you do, what you do. Is it something you can ask God's approval and his blessing? When you are about to do something, you ask this question. Now, this thing I am going to do, will it have my God's approval? And will it have my God's blessing upon it? Based on the scripture, for these things, you need to know what the Bible teaches us about everything. And now, question number three, can it be done while trying, while truly giving thanks to God? Now, if you know the Bible standard of what we need to do, what we should not do, you will have no difficulty in determining whether something you are about to do will be 
something that I can give God thanks and whether it will be glorifying God. Question number four. Is it a Christ-like action? Remember, would Jesus do it? That is the question. Would Jesus do it? You know, some time ago, the young people used to wear, and all of us used to wear a, 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 a badge, a band around our wrist saying WJD. Would Jesus do it? So that is a wonderful question to ask when you are about to do something. Would Jesus do it? And that will help you to determine whether your action is going to glorify him. And if you think that Jesus will not have done this, then don't do it. That will help you a lot if, if you have a desire to grow in the to the stature of Jesus Christ. Uh, first, read First uh, John chapter two verse six. After this meditation, you go back and read this verse. Question number five: Could it cause another Christian compromise his or her conscience or conviction? And at some point, weaken his or her devotion to Christ. Because you don't live for yourself. Apostle Paul says that none of us live for ourselves. We live for our neighbors, for our friends and our uh, fellow brothers and sisters to help them. Read uh, in connection with this uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Write down these references. For chapter, one, chapter 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Question number six. Will it weaken or strengthen my desire for spiritual things? What are these spiritual things, for example? God's word, which is very important. And prayer, which is another very important uh, spiritual exercise. And the fullness of the Holy Spirit and his anointing. How much do I desire for these blessings to come in my life and to fill my life? Ask this question. By doing this or by saying this, speaking this, will it help me or help others to have their desire strengthened for spiritual things? What I speak to them, Will it inspire strength in their life for spiritual things? That's the question that you must ask. Because remember, the Bible says we don't live for ourselves. And if that is true, then we need to be more concerned about others. Question number seven. Could it weaken or hinder my influence for Christ or Others who do not know him or who may look to me as an example of a Christ-like behavior. I repeat it one more time. Could what I am about to do or speak weaken or hinder my influence for Christ or for others? who do not know him and who look to me as an example of Christ-like behavior. That question is very, very important. Remember, we all are influencing somebody every day without us knowing it. You may not know. But what you speak, how you behave, in front of others, and uh, your actions and reactions, all these things are going to influence somebody around you. You remember Peter? He influenced six other disciples when he spoke one sentence. Hey, fellows, 
I am going to fish. That influenced all other six disciples also. They all said, we will come with you. You see how important what you speak and how you are influencing others by what you speak. Remember these things and ask these questions in order to safeguard yourself from being a stumbling block. And so, whatever you do, whether you are speaking something, you are about to do something, or you are eating, you are eating or drinking, anything, you do it for the glory and honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I thank you that you have spoken to us how we can be an influence in the life of others for your glory and honor and praise. May we live a very careful life that our actions and our, our, our behavior and our, our speech, everything will be in honor of you and in order to glorify you. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, have a good day today. For this is the day the Lord has given. Remember, the devil cannot give you any day. It is the Lord. So don't say this day was a bad day. No day is bad. <laughs> don't make it bad. By the grace of God, live for his glory. Amen.